Have you ever asked yourself, if I actually wanted to meet God, <laughs> what would I have to do to prepare myself to meet God? Would I need to go get a haircut? Would I need to dress up? Would I have to um, not be <laughs> the kind of person that I am, but uh, be some kind of perfect uh, person? What would, I, what would I have to change if I were going to meet God. And as I studied this week's epistle reading and talked with uh, friends about the reading and prayed about it and thought about it, I think I came to some kind of understanding of what would be required if I wanted to be ready to meet God. Let me just read to you the epistle reading for this week, 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 through 7. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like Him for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness, but you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins and in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. For Easter, I traveled north to celebrate with my family that lives up that way. And while we were there, we did an outing to Buttermilk Falls Park which is situated on a 19th century stone quarry. The sandstone from that area was used to build the uh, piers for bridges and um, for building tunnels in the local area. But if you're a big fan of the uh, coastal Im imagery that we normally share during these meditations, uh, hang tight, we'll be back to the coastal area in well, probably next week. <laughs> so, um, but thank you for joining us. And I think you'll enjoy the views of this little park in Pennsylvania. Now, isn't that first verse of this week's epistle reading beautiful? See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. But how is it that our being children of God has anything to do with God's love for us? Oh, our sweet Apostle John answers that many times, but the best known of his writings is probably John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The Apostle Paul, who had before he became a Christian, he had persecuted Christians. The Apostle Paul spoke of this in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, saying, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, the flaws of sin do separate us from the perfect and holy God. But to be blunt, that's a problem I can't fix myself. No one can. And what the, the apostles are going on about is that it was God out of his love who fixed that problem. He sent his son to live a sinless life, to be crucified, to take away our sins, to be raised in victory over sin, death, and the devil and then to ascend back to his place of glory in heaven. All of this happened without us 
lifting a finger. But if you've never met Jesus, never been in the presence of God, what do you need to do? In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, our sweet brother John again, uh, uses a metaphor. He describes Jesus as saying, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone, let me repeat that, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. For Peter, Jesus knocked while he was working in the fishing business. For Zacchaeus, he was literally up a tree and also figuratively in a sense because he was socially ostracized for being a tax collector for the Romans. And Nathaniel, well, he was found under a tree when Jesus knocked. And as I just mentioned a minute ago, the Apostle Paul was out persecuting Christians, persecuting the church when Jesus knocked. How did they change to meet Jesus? They didn't. They just opened the door to let Jesus come in. That's why being a child of God is a demonstration of God's love. We didn't have to pay an entry fee like you might have to to go see a celebrity or to be a certain kind of person or class of person. Jesus paid it all. Jesus comes to us. Jesus knocks on our door. And if we'll give him a place in our lives to do so, Jesus begins to change us into who we were created to be. Have you ever met a churchgoer who claimed to be holier than you, <laughs> to have it all together, not cool. John made a strong point of this earlier in his epistle where the Bible says that someone who claims to have no sin by words, deeds, or ugly condescension to others, someone who claims to have no sin is making God out to be a liar. 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. Our, again, sweet John writes, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. So, what steps do we need to take to meet God? Get that haircut, get a new suit, maybe go to a, a cathedral or some place of worship, run out of the bar or the drug den where we are right now, stop swearing, sit with good posture and our hands folded in our laps. What do we need to do? We need to do nothing but allow Jesus to come in to our lives right where we are, just as we are. He has already paid the price for us to get to know him and to become part of God's family. Letting Jesus in will change us <laughs> for Easter. Over 30 members of my family gathered together so the kids could have an Easter egg hunt. And one of the heartwarming moments in that Easter egg hunt was when one of the older kids went to the very youngest, and I think, I think Polly is like maybe 18 months old, something like that. And he kind of guided her, turned her so that she could see where the eggs were and was pointing them out so that she could find an egg while all the other kids were swooping in and snatching them away before a little kid could, could find them. And that's sort of like what Jesus does. When we open the door that he's knocking on, he comes in and he takes us and he turns us away from the things that were destroying us and dividing us. He takes us and turns us away toward God. 
and God's love and God's justice and God's mercy and God's light and God's truth. He shows us the direction in which to go. He changes us in that way. And as we come closer and closer, our passage says, to that day when either because we have passed on from this mortal, mortal coil, <laughs> as the old timers used to say, oh wait, I am an old timer, as we pass on from this life to the next and see Jesus face to face, this is going to happen. Or if Jesus returns and we see Christ face to face, this is going to happen. But what the verse says is, that when we see him as he is, we're going to become like him because we're going to see him face to face. So you start out wherever you are, whoever you are, however you are, wherever you are, you start out at that place, you let Jesus in, and he turns and he starts moving you in a new, healthier direction. And as you move in that direction, you're being changed, becoming more and more like Jesus. Until finally, on that last day when you see him face to face, you become like him, you arrive. But until that time, if you look around at all the other people that are in pews in the church or serving in the different ministries of the church, like uh, our food banks and hospitals and schools and so forth, as you turn and look at them, you're not going to see somebody who's perfect because they're just like you. God found them where they were, how they were, and uh, he's moving them in a direction, just like he's moving you in a direction. And none of us are there yet, but we're all going to the same place. So don't judge Jesus by the people you see around you. Jesus is pulling us all from where he found us. And that is why those words at the beginning of our passage are just so amazing to me. What great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. I've got to go now. I think I hear someone knocking at my door. Oh. Maybe I hear him knocking at your door. How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That he should give his only son to make a wretch is true.